Hi guys, thanks so much for tuning in to this video. I am Jay Theo and I hope that you guys are doing well. I hope everything's okay. I feel like the last couple weeks have been so weird with the weather, the government's always doing their thing, but I hope everybody's doing well and I'm finally back with another video. And today y'all, we are gonna be talking about the mean girl gaze and how we as a community need to do better with being more positive, being more embracing and more welcoming within the gay and queer community. One thing I can say as now a 31 year old gay man, I have seen so many different personalities within our community, being from the Midwest, living in New York, now living in Los Angeles. There are just so many gay people, unfortunately, that are not positive, that 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 like to be kind of bullies and who don't want to embrace and welcome other people within the community. And I understand that hurt people hurt people, but I'm going to be real with y'all. We need to do better. We need to do better. And as someone who's in his 30s, when I'm out, you know, trying to have a good time and I'm, I'm meeting new people and I see people that are 30 plus, 40 plus, 50 plus, still leaning into that million girl mentality, Y'all, we need to heal, we need to reflect, we need to be more introspective, and we need to see how our actions affect other people. Being gay, being queer, especially being gay men, we endure a lot, a lot, a lot of trauma. We endure a lot and lot, a lot of depression and things that affect our mental health. And when you finally get to a place where you are looking for a community and you feel like you're finding community, and then that community doesn't even want you or that community wants to be mean to you and and not welcoming to you that can really affect people's mental health and that can really affect you know them wanting to still be on this planet suicide rates are still extremely high for queer people and we need to really think about how we affect queer people it's not always straight people and bigoted people outside of the community that make queer people depressed we do it to our own. And we need to think about that when we are being catty and mean and shady and all of the above. I get thrown a little shade and things like that. It's fun, but everything has its limits. Like, we shouldn't always lean into be negative. We shouldn't always lean into shade. We shouldn't lean to always being in competition with members of our gay community. And we need to be more welcoming and more embracing. One thing I've been challenging myself this year is to really try and build a black and brown community out here in LA. And honestly, y'all, I'm really excited because I actually feel like I found it. I actually feel like I found a group of gay men that I'm excited to be around. They all are, you know, my age or older. And it's just really exciting. But even still, when, when I'm hanging out with these gay groups and, you know, friends of our friends bring each other or I reconnect with some old people that I used to be friends with, things like that, the mean girl stuff still seeps in from uh, outside groups. And I've just noticed that it's always seems like it stems from this desire for attention, this desire to be in competition. And why we gotta be in competition with each other, y'all? Why, why can't we all get the attention? Why can't we wanna see our fellow gay, black and brown people win? Why does it always have to be competition or, you know, or there's always some ulterior motive? Why can't we just all be embracing and have fun with each other? I just noticed the last few times I've gone out is when I'm having a fun time, when I'm dancing, when I'm being confident, when I'm doing my thing, there's always somebody turning their nose up, whispering in somebody's ear, doing things like that. And as a confident person, I don't let it get me down. I'm always going to keep dancing. I'm always going to keep having fun. I'm always going to keep being confident. But if I was somebody who was a little less secure, if I was somebody who was a little less confident, if I was somebody who was younger and that I'm still kind of feeling out and trying to really build my confidence within the gay community, Community, that can really be har harmful to me. That can really be harmful. And like I said, I understand hurt people hurt people, but that cannot be the excuse anymore for queer people and gay people to be mean and shady and to always feel like we have ulterior motives. We need community amongst each other. We need to embrace each other more. We need to be more welcoming. We need to be more positive. And we need to stop being out to get each other. And I think us even having that mindset off the gates is always thinking like, oh, if somebody comes around my new friend group, I gotta be mean to them. Or if I'm dating somebody and they bring their friends around, I gotta interrogate them. I gotta interrogate the person. It's just too much. 
Cause honestly, y'all, a main reason why I also have taken a pause on dating is when I'm dating people, when I'm getting to know a guy and then I meet his friends, they always will be so nasty and so mean. And they feel like that I'm in competition with them or something. And it's like, no, I'm dating him. You're friends with him. I will hope you being friends with him has some level of depth that you don't feel like you're in competition with somebody he's dating. But it's those things that really make it seem like, damn, can we ever just be embracing? Also, if somebody is dating your friend, wouldn't you want to be cool with them? Wouldn't you want to have a rapport with them? Wouldn't you want to embrace them? Wouldn't you want them to feel welcome within your friend group? Why does it always have to be anti and negative and ulterior motives and you, your friend, you can't steal my friend or it's always a competition. And I get it when you're younger and your teens and your 20s, you're still going through all that little stuff and the littlest drama is the biggest deal. But I still notice this mean girl mentality with men that are 30 plus, 40 plus, 50 plus. Like, when do you look in the mirror and really start reflecting on how you treat people? Stop being so mean. I'll never forget y'all went to this Tanache concert out here with a group of friends. I went with a gay guy that I was still trying to re, we, we like dated a little bit. We were trying to build a friendship. We, we realized we weren't meant to date. So we were like, let's build a friendship. He was going to this Tanache concert and I was like, okay, I want to go. We, I went. So most of the people there were his friend group, y'all. Most of the people there were his friends. And, you know, I'm introducing myself to everybody, y'all. They acting so stank, looking me up and down, like, oh, like, turning their necks up at me, just looking crazy. And I'm like, okay. So then the venue we were at, you could buy drinks. There was like a bar and where, she, you know, where you could buy drinks right before the concert. During the concert, before the concert, you could buy drinks. So I was like, hey, guys, I'm going to get you guys all a shot of some shots. Do you guys like tequila? And they were just looking at me crazy, like, oh, you're buying a shot? So I said, yeah, I'm like, I'm gonna buy a round of shots. You no, know, everybody, you know, it was probably like six of us. So I was like, I got it. You know, I'll buy a round of shots. Oh, you're gonna buy it yourself? Like, oh, like, what, what kind of tequila can we get? And I was like, what, whatever kind of tequila do you want? I'll get it for you. And when I say y'all, they looked so nasty. They had their noses turned up in the air that I was literally about to buy a round of shots of tequila for them. But I just feel like when I'm getting to know people, when I want to embrace people, I do that. I buy a round of shots. I buy you drinks. I'll bring a bottle. Like, I'm that girl. Like, I like building community. I like having connection. I'm a certain person. I like meeting people. But y'all, that night, so I bought them the shots. We got the shots. That was a whole thing. They felt so weird about me buying them. We kept the night going. And I'm a big Tanache fan. So I know all her songs, like even her new songs, I'm turning up. Y'all, why are they looking, two of the friends looking at me, pointing at me, laughing? And like, it was one of those things, y'all, I know they're pointing at me laughing. It's not, it's just the way they were whispering. When I would go up and try to talk to them, they'd be like, we weren't talking to you. They would say stuff like that to me. And I'm like, okay. So then there was this other group of like Latino and white boys that were dancing and turning up. And I just went and uh, the whole night, y'all just start dancing with them. And I was grinding on them and we were just having a good time. And even then they were laughing and pointing at me and like looking weird. And I even went up to one of my friend's other friends. I was like, what's the deal with those two? And he was like, yeah, they're catty. They're me they're being messy. Don't mind them. Like, I love your energy. Keep turning up. Da 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 And I'm like, so me and him were cool. One of the other friends. But it was just like, why? What am I doing wrong? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be embracing. I'm trying to be welcoming. And then I'm the bad guy. And then I'm judged. Like, that's not okay. And at the end of the day, I'm a confident person. Yes, in the moment, I felt some type of way. But I was like, you know what? I'm about to turn up with these other people that are some big Tanache fans. We about to have the... And I had the time. Of my, I had such a great night. Tanache did her thing. But... I'm just saying, if I wasn't a confident person, if I wasn't assertive, if I couldn't flex and move in moments like that, then that could affect me way worse than it did. And those are moments where I feel like for our, our queer people, where they may try to commit suicide, or they may try to hurt themselves, where they may feel that they don't have a sense of community. Think about it. We are pushed off from our families, most of us. We are not embraced by the straight community, especially if we are black and brown. A lot of us that are black and brown are not embraced within the straight community in the ways we should be. So you don't have community there or, and you know, or if you do have community, it's a lot, it's women or, or it's with straight men that you can't be yourself, whatever, which is great. But still, you don't feel like you can fully be yourself. And then when you try to venture out and build community with the queer community, then they want to be haters and they want to be mean girls. 
Like y'all, we can do better. We can do better. And that's all that I want to make this post for. You know, I, one cool thing I feel like I'm really starting to get into Twitter. And one thing I'm so grateful for Twitter is I'm really finding like a black and brown queer community on Twitter as well. I'm finding other black and brown gay intellectuals and gay, and not even just intellectuals, just gay black and brown men that, that, that are embracing and welcoming and like to talk about, you know, what's happening in the world and like to talk about deep introspective things. And it's just cool just seeing that there are communities out there. And I just feel like sometimes you gotta put that extra legwork in and you gotta kind of put yourself out there I'm just happy that, you know, even with TikTok, I'm finding more community. I, you know, every time I get a mutual, I'm like, hey, what's up? Like, I'm trying to just be more embracing of the people that think like me and that are confident and aren't mean and aren't trying to be bullies. And I really feel like for a lot of us, I know a lot of us cannot seek therapy. We may not have the resources to, but I feel like there's ways you can hear yourself. Ask yourself, what, why was I mean to that person? Why did I not, why did I not want to embrace that friend? Why is it that my friend is dating somebody and I can't bring it to, to myself to be welcoming, to be nice to them? Ask yourselves those questions because I feel like we, even if you can't talk to a therapist, I still think you have the power to look at yourself in the mirror. I think you have the power to be self-critical with yourself. I think you have the power to be self-aware with yourself. And I know those, those thought processes aren't always easy, but start asking yourself, why are you doing the things you're doing? So y'all, I'm a huge RuPaul Drag Race fan. I just recently finally started getting back into the seasons and I'm watching the latest season. And y'all, there's a queen on there, Mistress Isabel Brooks, which her runways are great. She does great in competitions, but she is such a mean girl. She is such a mean girl and she's a bigger girl. And I feel like she's a mean girl because and she talked about at the beginning of the season, how she was bullied and how she always had to, and her family wasn't accepted and how she always had to take up for herself. And I think, and that's where I feel like the mean girl and the shade comes from. But y'all, she's shady in such an extreme way. And she thinks she's being this shady, fun person. You're being mean. You're being mean, you're being bitchy, you're being super, 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 super bully, like a bully to me. I actually think that Mistress Isabel Brooks on the show is sometimes being a bully. And, but I understand where it stems from. And I really just wish she would take more time to think about what she's saying, think about the way she's affecting people. Even when other queens on the show explain to her how she's making them feel, she just disses in, acts like it's not a big deal. But at the end of the day, like I get her, like I said, I, once again, I get her people hurt people, but y'all, we can't just keep the cycle going. We cannot keep the cycle going. If you didn't want to be bullied when you were growing up, if you wanted to be embraced and welcome, you have to be more embracing and welcoming, even if it feels uncomfortable. Even if it feels uncomfortable, do it, do it. Why can't we have more of a community in the black and brown queer community, in the, in the whole queer community? Why can't we all be more welcoming? Why? Why can't we all be more welcoming? One of my friends actually hosted a really cool discussion um, here in LA and it was gay POC men and we were discussing with, and we invited white, white, white gay men to have a discussion about intersectionality. And it was a great discussion where we were talking about race and colorism and self-hate. And the, and the white men, they were, they were contributing in a very positive way. And they, they were, they were listening. They were, you know, it was a great conversation. And it really just shown like if we were more, if we, if we, opened our ears more, if we all tried to be more welcoming, if we all tried to be more embracing, where could the queer community really be if we tried to make sure we have more representation? You know, where could we be as a community? I don't know. It's just, it's, I feel like it's just so limitless. And I feel like queer people, we have so many great stories to tell. We have so many great backgrounds. We have, we have overcame so much. And I think we would be so much more powerful if we tried to come together more. And if we stopped hating on each other so much and stopped trying to shade each other so much and always trying to one up and be in competition with it. I get, we all want to find love. I get, we all want to find spouses and partners and all those things. But that doesn't mean that everybody is your competition. That doesn't mean that everybody's out to get you. That doesn't mean that everybody is trying to be a nasty girl. I do think that you definitely need to make sure you have discernment and that you are making sure that you vet people and that you're not letting people take advantage of you and you're being naive. Yes, you should not be naive. You just shouldn't fall into friend groups. You should make sure that you are trying to build genuine connections with people 
and trust and all of the things that make real friendship shine. But at the end of the day, being a mean girl, being a bully, that's not love. And the more we start changing the narrative of what love is, of what being supportive is, we can be better for each other. You know, I know a lot of our parents being mean and screaming and all those things, that's what we thought love is, but we can redefine love. We can redefine it. One of my favorite books by Bell Hooks, All About Love, talks about how we as a society can redefine love. The way love is shown to us in media and movies and all those things, it's hateful, it's violent, it's struggle. We don't have to have struggle love. You can have friends that are supportive, that are embracing, that gas you up when you're turning up, when you're out. You can have friends where they're dating somebody and you're like, oh my God, so nice to meet you. These are the great things my friend can offer you. I'm so glad that you guys are having a great romantic connection. We'd love to get to know you more. Like, you can be that. It's okay. It is okay. Even with the older gays, I can empathize. Losing so many friends during like the, the peak of the HIV epidemic or not being able to be yourself at a younger age like a lot of these other queer younger people. But why not embrace that now? Why not lean more into the freedom you have now? You're still here. Be still present. Mentor someone. Be there for a younger gay. Show them that you can bypass the shade and bypass the mean and bypass the bullying, bullying and still be a good person. All to say, y'all, I know I'm just talking. All to say, and I know I'm rambling, but I don't care. I really wanted to make this video because I feel like we can be better as a gay community. We can be more embracing as a gay community and we can just be more for our community. Why not? We can have so much more fun. The more I'm leaning into these friend, these friends that I'm making out here and just leaning into building community. Like I planned this whole Valentine's Day dinner and it was all about positivity and within the gay community, within black and brown people. It was about it was about nine of us that attended. It was black gays, it was Latino gays. It was super cool. We had questions, we're in a, in a bowl where we pulled them out. It was all about dating and sex. And y'all, we just had really dynamic, deep conversations. It was just really fun. And I wanna keep doing more events like that where I'm really building community together. I don't wanna just talk, I wanna plan. Um, even this summer, I'm trying to figure out ways I can plan some events in LA to really be more embracing and more um, welcoming to our community and just building more community because why not I think it's so much fun to be around people that are like you that you have a safe space that you can identify with I think that's just something that so many gay people need even in these big cities we need this even in your small if you live in a smaller city maybe you can be the first person to start a community start an event host something to really bring in that gay community that queer community really connect with your with with that demographic that's that that you identify with just having a safe space like that, just having a sense of community is so helpful. Cause y'all about three to six months ago, I was ready to leave LA. I was so over the colorism, the internalized racism, like the fetishism. I was just so over it. And I just didn't feel like I had real community out here. But y'all, but when I started meeting these other guys about six months ago, I really started vibing with them and something fell through, an opportunity fell through for me to leave LA. I really just started embracing it and I'm enjoying LA so much more now that I have this community that, that I feel like I'm a part of and the, that I feel that I identify with. And like I said, I love my straight friends, I love my girlfriends, I love all of my other friends, but it's something about being a black gay person and being friends with other black gay people or brown people or trans people. It's just so, so dope. It's so motivational and it's inspirational to keep trying to grow connections. And I just want more of us as gay people to have that. I think this sense of connection amongst our peers and amongst people that look like this, us and go through the same things as we go through just creates a safety net for us. It keeps us from wanting to not be on this planet. It keeps us from not wanting to commit suicide. It keeps us from falling into deep depression. Or if you are falling into depression, it gives you somebody to talk to. So with all that being said, I know I've talked a lot. I just wanna say guys, let's stop the mean girl bullshit. Let's look at ourselves in the mirror and ask ourselves, why are we doing it? Why are we being bullies? If we are in our 30s, 40s, 50s, you need a reality check. And some of us, maybe that step is you really need to force yourself to go to therapy. Maybe you need to ask your friends, how can I be a better friend? How can I show up? One of my really good gay friends asked me that. 
a couple months ago and was like, Jay, how can I be a better friend to you? How can I show up better? And I was like, wow, that's such a, a dope question as a friend to ask. And we had like a deep conversation on how both of us, us can show up better for him as a friend. Ask your friends that. Why not? How can I be a better friend to you? Is there something I do that bothers you? As a friend, I know that I do this. I know this is a flaw. I'm trying to work on it. What are your thoughts? Give me your feedback. Ask your friends for feedback. If you're really your friend, if you really love them, you'll 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 get some good feedback. You'll have some good discussion, and it'll help you be more self-critical. It'll help you be more introspective and self-aware on how you impact others. Because sometimes you're just not aware. Sometimes you're just not aware. So guys, I just want to send positivity, light. I want us all to build community this year. I want us all to be more embracing. And, and we can do it, y'all. We can do it. We can do it. So guys, if you like this video, if you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. Please drop a comment. Talk about your experience. If you were used to be a mean girl gay and you are, you overcame, or if you're working through it, or if you experienced a mean girl gays and you're still trying to find a community, or if you finally found your community, or if you're working to find your community of friends, let me know. I want to hear all about it. I want to discuss it with you guys. Be sure to subscribe if you are feeling this content. If you're feeling the content, subscribe. I really want to keep providing content for our, my gay community, my queer community as much as I can and I love talking to you guys I love having discussions with you guys be sure to follow me on my socials j.theo on tiktok j underscore theo underscore on twitter and instagram and as always guys do your best to stay safe stay positive and I will see you guys on the next video